Here's a look at the necessary special tools needed for dismantling and mounting the big end bearing caps. All of these tools are delivered standard with the engine. Turn the crank of the particular cylinder in bottom dead centre position. This is the best position to place hydraulic jacks. Now turn the bearing cap upside down until the stud bolt nuts point vertically upwards. Then place both the jacks on the stud bolts at the same time so that the weight of the jacks is divided uniformly and the caps remain in balance. Since all four of the stud bolts have to be stretched simultaneously, three jack elements are used so that together they deliver the tensile force needed. Note, this distance piece is provided with the pin groove at the side. Every jack element has a separate coupling for oil supply. As soon as the jacks are connected to the hydraulic pump, the nuts of the jacks are turned tight with a hook spanner. This is in order to prevent the jack reaching its maximum stroke. Then turn back the four nuts half a turn. Bring the jacks under the right pressure with the pneumatic pump. Check at which pressure the nuts come loose and turn back the nuts sufficiently. Subsequently lower the pressure to 50 bar and check if the nuts are free. When they are, release the pressure completely. Remove the jacks and turn the relevant crank in top dead centre position. When turning, be sure that the bolts of the bearing block point downward to prevent them from getting stuck in the engine block. To place the slide, the bearing block has to rotate 90 degrees around the shaft so that the nuts from the lower bearing cap point to the exhaust side of the engine. Subsequently fix the slide to the purpose fitted supports on both sides of the engine block. The supports take care of the positioning and securing of the slide. Now turn the crank carefully 60 degrees through top dead centre towards the exhaust side. Place at camshaft side the carrier under the upper bearing cap. Connect it with the two nuts to the bearing cap. Now first remove at exhaust side the two lower nuts of the bearing cap in such a way that the second carrier can be mounted. Pull up the blocking pin when the carriers are moved inside. Fasten the carrier of the lower bearing cap by turning on the blocking pin in the locating hole at one side of the cap. During mounting of these carriers it is possible and sometimes necessary to turn the crankshaft a little bit. Always do this with the manual control of the turning gear device. When also the upper nuts have been removed, both the bearing caps can be pulled out. The bearing shells can be removed from the bearing caps by hand. Wrap up the shaft with a piece of rubber for protection and closing of the lubrication oil channels in the crankshaft. The crank pin bearings can also be inspected without removing the cylinder head and the piston. The piston will be blocked then by means of two supports. These are the aluminium supports with matching fastening bolts. 
they are both placed through the crankcase door and mounted at the bottom side of the cylinder liner with the delivered bolts. To do so, the piston has to be placed in top position. Subsequently, remove the already loosened nuts of the connecting rod foot. After that, turn the crank to the bottom dead center position. Now the piston with connecting rod will rest on both supports and the bearing caps will come free from the connecting rod foot. When the crank is in bottom dead center, the big end bearing caps can be dismantled in accordance with the preceding procedure. Mounting has to be done in reversed order.